we once had a Hollywood stuntman on the show, and someone got the bright idea of, of opening up, you know, with the opening titles, and then zooming into this man standing on the window ledge on the fourth floor of Pebble Mill, then having him fall off into a great pile of cardboard boxes. And they're all very, you know, gung-ho, these stunt guys. Yeah, like, well, jump up, yeah, no problem, Gov. You know, whenever you're ready, you let me know. Just get me boxes set up, I'll do it. All right, no problem. Well, this stuntman said to me beforehand, he said, you know, he said, the secret is, is in the way I land. I've got to time it just right. He said, if I, I've got to land on my back, spread out, and that cushions the impact. He said, if I go in feet first, I am dead. And he's got the boxes. Are you ready, Roy? Yeah. Uh, well, okay, in your own time. And I watched him plummet in feet first, and he was just like a bomb. Woof! And there was this tremendous crack, and then dead silence, you know, absolute silence. And I thought, my God, you know, what do I do now? Do I say, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pebble Millet One. I'm afraid our first guest has just died, but here's a catchy little number from Kenny Ball, you know. And this figure scrambles from the middle of the boxes, and he's got a huge black eye or purple eye that's going black and black, and the hair big. The nose is slightly over there, and there's blood coming out of it. But he was a real trooper. I mean, he obviously believed in the old adage that the show must go on, because he, not only did he do the interview, but he did another fall later in the program. I thought, that is a real pro. <laughs> OK, I'm here with uh, Roy Escamel, renowned British stuntman has worked on Doctor Who serials, movies like Codex Barry Lyndon and Clockwork Orange, Reichstag, Legend of Tarzan, Saturn 3, Willow, James Bond, The Spy Who Loves Me, For Your Eyes Only, Golden Eye, and sci-fi cool movies as Rollerball, Flash Gordon, and that really is called Masterpiece called Alien, which is one of my all-time favorites. So let me ask you, Roy, uh, for this last one, uh, as I am very curious in how is it made, what is the job of or a stunt coordinator in a movie like this? Um, Alien was an unusual picture. It was basically um, special effects more than stunts, really. But the coordination of getting things right, so the alien look correct, was, was after the stunt coordinator was working with the uh, special effects department and all the stuff. Um, you're responsible, obviously, for movement of people uh, running down corridors. They had to look right. You know, when the alien hung upside down, they had to be set on wires. So that stuff was all in my domain, with, uh, working with wire men. Mm -hmm. You hoist up and down uh, as the alien comes down and disappears. So it's a combination of effort with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What did you thought when, when you saw the alien critter shoot for the first time? Because you, you, you also put it on you. Yeah. Um, uh, when Geiger first appeared on the set, mm -hmm. uh, he was very quiet, very, very, very unusual character, and he produced the, the suit with a couple of characters. And, and I thought I, I couldn't work out what it was, quite frankly, because it was laying just laying on the floor. And then we pick it up. And I thought I thought it was the body was just like a big ant or a big spider. But then I was this was the head. And the thing was a great big high thing. I thought, well, this is something quite different than I expected, you know. It really was different. How many characters did you double in the movie? Um, three, I think. Uh, no, two, I think. It was actually two. Um, yeah. That was Ian Holm, mm -hmm. um, quite a bit of John. John, yeah. John Hurt. John Hurt, yeah. John Hurt. yeah. Okay. Um, you used to be present in the set all the time, or for the whole filming? Most of the time, yes. Most of the time we required, unless it was dialogue, which was uh, very close with Sigourney or somebody else or whatever. So it was a close dialogue, because the set was quite confined. Uh, a lot of the time it was in tunnels, so you couldn't get too many people. If you got too many cluster of people, it, it was claustrophobic, you know, so it wasn't very good. Yeah. Which was the, the toughest stunt in the movie? The, the more complicated to accomplish or most, most dangerous one? Well, I think the actual part, the, the final part where the alien uh, goes through the glass where Sigourney shoots him. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the, the only way to really do that was uh, from a high fall, the body falling backwards. Um, that was the only way I had, you know, a risk of some, so it could have been quite dangerous because the shape of the head. Mm -hmm. of the alien, uh, 
on a normal pan, a normal uh, bevel used with carbon box pan. Uh, you, you did that this time, or, or Eddie Power? Eddie did, did this time. Eddie did, did this time, yeah. I tested it, but Eddie actually did. So, well, we, you know, I tested it first. No, the, the fall, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did the, I did the fall first, and Eddie did the fall, so we don't know. And, and as I said before, um, it's always a, a thing in the, the film business, shoot the rehearsal. So mine was a rehearsal, so we don't know which whether it was either way. How was working with Ridley Scott? He is very famous to be very demanding. <laughs> uh, demanding, precise, knew exactly what he wanted, uh, very good with me. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, he just said, what would you like? And I said, I like that. He said, great, you know, that works. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I worked with him first, or about um, 10 years before, on a, a commercial for mm -hmm. television. Um, Strongbow, which is a, an archer, and I had to be hung by the neck from a drawbridge in Scotland and dropped into a moat about 50 feet below. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rigging went wrong, and I had to organise the rigging on that. It was a re rig, and I think you remember that. Okay. You, you said you, you doubled uh, John Hart. You, did you recognize yourself in, in this photo I want to show you? Yes, yes, I'd, I'd say that, yeah. Before falling into the eggs, or actually, no, it was down in the eggs, actually, after I'd fallen through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have another rare photo? Yeah. Well, I think you also worn the. This weird shoot, you know, right? Yeah, I'm going to show the camera a bit first. It's not Ian. Uh, it's not John Hart in that in that in that show. No, I think that's me. Yeah, certainly. Okay. So, I think you brought uh, with you something to show me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is uh, you, you as you double the uh, Ian Holm. Ian Holm, yeah. This was the the jump shoot he he used well, or, or you as a stand uh, using in the in the filming, in the right? Film, yes, indeed. It's very it's very strange. I remember I remember the wardrobe department sticking yeah. these. Uh, Extra piece of sewing on the side here, which yeah, is stuck on with glue. This is done with with two different suits. Yeah, two different suits. Yeah. And what happened with that patch? I think it got pulled off in one of the rehearsals for the fights. Yeah, and because you have this, they are not glued. They they have fallen down. I've just stuck them on with pins, so they they were originally with glue, but they just they've just fallen off. Okay, that, that's something I have seen in other costumes. The the, the patches have, have fallen. Thank you, thank you. And how how did you get that costume? Really? Well, at the end of the production, I mean, it was my costume, and I said that I'd like to keep it. So I said, keep it, keep it, you know. I you know. well, if there's any fee deducted from my my paycheck, you know. But I don't know if it's done or not, but they said you have the suit. That was the wardrobe department, you know, and the production office, so I said, okay. okay so last question I want to ask you is, um, what is the best mem memory you have uh, between this movie, and what is the worst one? Well, I don't think it was a worst one. It was a very... It was very uh, happy company, and there's no, never any atmosphere. I, I think um, Sigourney Weaver, she was a lovely lady. I mean, in the sequence where, uh, in the end piece where she was uh, running around the fight, you know, um, it was just the delight to work with her. She was always smiling, always quite happy. Obviously, she was a very young person those days, so it was her first big major, I think, big major film. And it was just being around that presence of all, all the actors. There was you know, the whole bunch was really nice group of people. There was never any bad feeling with anybody. It was just like a nice unit generally. Okay, okay right. Uh, that's what all you were very kind, very kind to ask me these questions. And well, see you in the uh, next show. I hope so. Thank you very much for your. And you really know what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.